All right, our coverage continues here on News Nation now as reaction comes in from around the country to the death of O.J. Simpson at the age of 76. We start this hour of coverage with News Nation's Dan Abrams, who you watch every night on Dan Abrams Live. He covered the trial uh, back in the day, I believe both the criminal and the civil trial, right? Dan, that was back in your, in your court TV days, right? Yeah, I was in the courtroom. Uh, one, of the, one of the few people who was inside the courtroom for both the, the criminal and the, the civil case. And, you know, this is a kind of an odd day uh, for someone like me who has lived so much of the O.J. Simpson case. But I, I do think that as I heard the news of O.J. Simpson's death, and it sort of relates to something that Ashley Banfield was just saying, my immediate thoughts were about the Goldman and the Brown families. Um, and what were they thinking? How are they feeling on this day? Um, as opposed to what you would typically do um, when someone's death is announced. It is interesting, right? It's not that same sense of mourning that you have with another figure, for obvious reasons, dies in the country. And you're right. We had and put it up Fred Goldman's statement uh, earlier today talking about how that should be the only focus. Because he said something, I'm paraphrasing that, but said, that should be our only focus today, my son and Nicole. Here it is right now, a reminder of how long Ron has been gone and how long we've missed him and nothing more than that. The only thing that's important and there's nothing today that's more important than the loss of my son and the loss of Nicole. So uh, there you go, Dan. Like uh, he was, uh, I'm sure he's glad you were thinking what you were thinking. And, and you can understand the frustration, even to this day, of the Goldman and the Brown family. First of all, in the case itself, right? I have never seen a case with more evidence go to trial than the O.J. Simpson case. Now, I mean, the amount of blood and fiber and DNA and um, inconsistencies in his account, et cetera. Never have I seen a case with this much evidence. So that's frustration number one, right, is the fact that there was an acquittal. Remember, he was found responsible in the civil uh, case. Um, but then number two is that after they won the civil case and they tried to execute on the judgment, O.J. Simpson's lawyer has been mocking the victim's families for pursuing the judgment um, to this day. And, and one of the things that, to me, is most striking when you think about the two cases, because because I have lived these cases so much, and I would have people say to me, well, you know, I had questions about this piece of evidence and what happened to the blood here and the contamination. And, and, and I say to them, did you follow the civil case? Because if you followed the civil case, you really can't have any questions anymore, meaning they find at the at the crime scene a size 12 Bruno Mali shoe. That's a big shoe, right? A very unique type of shoe. O.J. Simpson wore size 12 shoes, but they could never definitively link the shoe to O.J. Simpson. Except during the civil trial, they got to actually question him under oath. And he said, I would never wear those ugly ass shoes. Hmm. Well, lo and behold, eight months, as it turns out, uh, before the murders, there was a Buffalo Bills newsletter that was discovered just during the civil case of O.J. Simpson wearing the ugly-ass shoes. And that was it. I mean, you know, <laughs> you want to talk about anything else, it was game over at that point. So for those who still say, well, he was acquitted, and right. I just talked about this on my radio show. We got to, you do, you got to respect that, but you also got to say we've even learned more since the criminal case. Well, it's interesting to me. I mean, I had a guy on who was a, a good friend of his, a childhood friend a few minutes ago. And I, I you know, I, I, I don't know if I handled it correctly or not. I was trying to be respectful of him as his friend who died and all the rest. And, you know, he's saying that he, he walked out and he was acquitted. But to your point, the, the evidence was so overwhelming. I'm curious, as you say, one of the few people who was in both courtrooms, what did it in looking back all these years later in the, in the criminal trial? Was it as simple as the, the glove didn't fit? That, was that it? Or no. what, what, what was no. it? It was the jury. It was the jury. There was never a shot. I mean, people like to say, oh, the prosecutors messed up this case. What they messed up was the jury selection. Hmm. What they messed up was where they had this case. They could have had it in Santa Monica. Instead, they had it in downtown Los Angeles. The prosecution's theory was that African-American women would be understanding of the domestic violence piece of this. Remember, Nicole Brown Simpson had put in her, secure, in her safety deposit box 
pictures of her beaten face, just in case something happened. Then something happens, and the prosecutors thought that African American women would would understand the issue of domestic violence. You know, it turns out that from moment one, the prosecutors never really had a shot here. The minute that race was injected into this, you had a situation in Los Angeles at the time where there are a lot of people in the African American community very angry at the police and the authorities, et cetera. I had a guy on my radio show call in today and say to me, look, regardless of what the evidence was, I will tell you if I'd been a juror on the case, I would have voted to acquit him just so it would be a win for us. We were tired of what was happening. That was what this verdict was about. Anyone who says, well, the prosecution shouldn't have presented this piece, they, they came up with a verdict in three hours right. in the most overwhelming case I have ever seen. You know, Bill Roden was on from the New York Times, you know, the longtime columnist from the New York Times sports yeah. columnist. We were talking about sports and race and all the rest of it. And he said for, he thought in, in the black community at the time it was almost uh, the, the win was for Johnny Cochran, that the, or at least that's the way he looked at it, you know, that that was like, all right, you know, this is a win. That, that's the way he, he saw it then, which I thought was at least interesting. And look, Johnny Cochran became a very good friend of mine. Uh, we ended up hosting a show together after the case. Uh, we stayed friends until his death. Hmm. Um, I will tell you, and I'm going to talk about this on my show tonight, I don't think a single one of his defense attorneys, apart from F. Lee Bailey, thought that O.J. Simpson was innocent. Not one of them, except for F. Lee Bailey. F. Lee Bailey was the only one who I think actually thought O.J. didn't do it. Hmm. But from their perspective... They represented a client. They did what John Adams did uh, back in the day. Uh, they were defending um, someone who had hired them to defend him. Um, and you know, I I respect that. I don't I don't begrudge the lawyers for the arguments that they made. But I think that anyone now who views this as anything but a miscarriage of justice right. when it came to the criminal case probably didn't follow the entirety of what happened. Very All right, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, and but maybe I have to watch the, the show tonight about why you say that about F. Lee Bailey. Uh, because I talked to all the lawyers after the case, and you, you F. really Bailey felt it. was like, he was infuriated when you would suggest that O.J. did it. I mean, he would just get all riled up huh. and and upset, and 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 he, I think he was the only one. Because, again, I, I, without we don't have time to go through all the evidence. I will talk about it on my show tonight on, from a sort of personal perspective. There is nothing like the amount of evidence everywhere. I mean, the, just the fact that the glove, one glove, is found at the crime scene, the matching glove, which it turns out Nicole Brown Simpson had bought him these gloves, is found at his home and it has all of the mixed blood of the different people involved. And there was no opportunity to plant it. Right. It's like it, it, there's never been anything. And that's just one piece of evidence in the case. Right. You never see anything close to this, it sounds like. You know, to, to your whole career. Oh, there's Dan. Uh, this was, uh, boy, that, that, there you go. You look great. Still look the same as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your, you uh, look great back then. You know? <laughs> I've changed a bit in your court TV days. I was at a yeah. you made on Charlie Rose, I guess. But yeah, even from then to now, it sounds like all the cases you covered, all the cases you talked about, that there's nothing you've seen that's quite like this or, you know, even and, close to it. And, 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 and this is another point I'm going to make on my show. There yeah. will never be another O.J. Simpson. Right. Every, people always say to me about high-profile cases, what's going to be the next O.J.? Is this going to be the next O.J.? My answer is always there will never be another O.J. Simpson case. He was one of the most famous people in America before that. And yeah. then you inject race, domestic violence, got a beautiful wife in Los Angeles at that time, particularly based on the way the media existed at that time. There will never be. And, and this is coming from someone who founded Law and Crime Network, which covers trials. And so, you know, from a, a business perspective, I follow trials, live stream trials, et cetera, but there will never be another O.J. Simpson. All right, Dan. Well, I'm looking forward to tonight and when you go through all this in detail. So we'll watch you tonight. And really, uh, thanks for hopping on with us today uh, early. We really appreciate it. Of course. See you, Connell. Dan Abrams. Uh, you'll see him tonight, 9, 8 central here on uh, News Nation on uh, Dan Abrams Live. Thank you for watching.
Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.